Welcome back to M Hood Fishing, everybody. So I'm back down at that pipe behind me where I've been fishing for a little bit. The last time I fished here, I found it to not be snaggy. This time I'm going to throw out a little further and we're gonna target channel cats and blue cats today. Today we're fishing with strawberry chicken. Now this is dark chicken. A lot of times when you hear people talk about fishing with chicken, they're using chicken breasts. This is dark meat off of some drumsticks that had been in my freezer for way too long. They got forgotten off in the back. So I cut the meat off and then I took strawberry gelatin. Another thing that you hear people talk about mostly is using Kool-Aid to flavor this, this chicken. But you can also use gelatin. This is strawberry gelatin. I just keep a lot of strawberry gelatin in the house for catfish purposes. So basically when you do this, you, t you get your chicken all cut up or you cut your chicken breast up, whatever you're gonna do. And then you take your uh, gelatin. I use like two or three packs, I think, this time. You, throw, you pour that in there or your Kool-Aid, mix it around and you let it sit overnight before you use it. See the size of this piece? So we're gonna fish this chicken on four aught jackhammers by uh, Team Catfish. And we're gonna take take it through a piece of the chicken and then we're going to take it through another piece of the chicken that way we have it hooked twice so this is a kind of a basic slip rig we got 50 pound mono for the leader like i said it's a four aught jackhammer j by team catfish and we got on sinker slides three ounces of lead so we can get out there good ways and stay stable Already got rod holders here on the beach. This spot actually looks a lot different than the last time I fished from it for catfish. It's because Delta came through here and pushed a lot of water up and it's all eroded away a little bit, <clears throat> exposing it a little more. There used to be a bunch of wharfs along here but this section I think is a little less snaggy because there was a gap between wharfs here, maybe, possibly. When you see stuff like this, that usually means that uh, ships were docking here. So see how close that is? There might not have been a, a wharf here. I don't know. I'm just guessing, really. We're gonna watch the rods from in the shade. Though it's around five o'clock in the afternoon, it's pretty warm still. It got up to around 90 degrees today, 89, 90, something like that. Depends on what you look at. It was a very humid day. That's why it feels really warm to me right now. But there's a cold front coming through tonight. It's not that big of a cold front. There's a more significant one coming later this week. So let's stay nice and cool and watch these rides. Yes, that was actually really fast. I was only up in that shade for less than five minutes. We're using 80 pound braid. So for this fish to bend this high, high, the tidewater rod, it's a pretty decent fish. Those industrial rod holders that were left on the beach from whatever used to be here, Super strong, worked out fine. There we go. Thirteen point thirty six. Yeah, you're right. Wow. Not bad, not bad, not bad. There 
There he goes. All right, thanks, man. You know, I take back what I was saying earlier about maybe there was not a wharf here at one time. Look at this. That is what's left over of, from a wooden pylon. I think that's wood. And you look over here and you see, I've got my rods on this concrete and it's a huge concrete bulkhead up here. So maybe there was a wharf here. It's just not as snaggy as most of this stretch is. Back over that way where I was catching flatheads down there a few days ago, that is extremely snaggy. And going past Piety Wharf, which is that structure in the distance, really, really snaggy over on the other side of that. But this isn't so well. So far, so far, so good. Let's see if it is so far so good. Let's try it. Oh, no, it's not. We're either in the mud or this is a snag. Feels like a hard snag. Ooh, yeah. Hard snag. It's not so far so good. It's not so good so far. <laughs> I had to snap that line before I retie and rebait up. Let's do what I was trying to do. I want to see if we still have bait. Let's see if this will come in as well. The bait is still good. All right, guys, one more time. We're going to go over how I made this. Get your chicken, cut it into the size pieces you want to fish with, put it in a Ziploc bag, and then take two or three 99 cent jello strawberry jello boxes and dump that stuff into the bag mix it around do not add water put it in the fridge for at least overnight before you fish with it the longer it sits the better this has been sitting for days as you can see it is all red and gelled up perfect to go all right now i want to tell you the good and the bad about strawberry chicken it seems like a pretty good alternative to cut bait. I think cut bait would have worked a lot better out here. So that it's a good alternative to cut bait. If, if you can't get anything for cut bait like skipjack, mullet, or bluegill, or any other kind of panfish, you could always get some chicken and make some strawberry chicken. It's pretty easy to make. It lasts a good while. It stays on the hook a good while. Now the bad thing about it, it's messy, it's sticky, it attracts ants, and you're gonna smell like strawberries. So bring a towel and try not to wipe it on your pants because you get around people later, and they're gonna be smelling your fruity butt. So yeah, you're right. Well, I've run out of time. I actually don't have a lot of time to fish today, so I gotta go, I gotta get up early in the morning and do some more fishing. So let's get home and edit this video for you. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and I will see you next time.